So you've written a, a very interesting book. This will be of interest to anybody who is a, a, a Gunners fan. It'll be interesting to anybody who wants to know what actually happens behind the scenes with the world of rock and roll. And, and, and I guess, what, would I be correct in saying that the reason you wrote this book is to, design, to, to set the record straight? I mean, there's been a lot said and written about well, you over the last 20 years. Yes, there's been a lot. Well, first, thank you for having me. And yeah, there's been a lot of stuff said, and I want to set the record straight, but for me, it, it, it's very mentally and physically and spiritually um, healing for me to do this. And as you know, you read the book, there's no bashing or putting down of anybody, you know. They, I, I'm thankful and um, I love everybody that's been a part of my life, except for, of course, the older teenager and the older guy who uh, sexually abused me which is in the beginning of the book. And doing that, saying, just saying those words was, was so important for me to be able to say it, but the hardest thing for me to say, you know, I thought if somebody heard those words from my mouth mm. to their ears, that I would feel worse, or people would think less of me. But it's the complete opposite. I said it to people who understood and can relate and it was like the biggest weight lifted off my shoulders. And I'm sure that message coming from you sent a message to other people saying it's okay to talk about these things yeah. because... It's important to talk yeah. about it. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, a lot of people can go to jail, but who cares? Look what they've done. Right. You know, you got to get this out. You can't keep... I couldn't continue with my life. I couldn't move on. I couldn't move ahead with my career, with my life, with my family if I didn't say these things and get them out of my system. It's so important. You had a hell of a childhood. I mean, bouncing between <laughs> your mom, well, first of all, your, your dad was no prize. Yeah. And you bounced between your mom and your grandmother and whoever else would take you in. Well, you know, at the times, of course, you don't think, you think it's the worst thing that's ever happened to you. But when I look back at it now, if, my, if I didn't have the childhood I had with my family, and if I didn't go move and live with my grandparents, I would have never met Slash. Mm -hmm. And then this whole, you know, process of the last 30 years would have never happened. Well, and to think that you almost joined the Navy. <laughs> I know. They wouldn't accept me. <laughs> they wouldn't accept me. I did that test, and just like I did in school, I just, you know, colored any color, you know, A, B, C, or D. I didn't, wasn't even reading it, just, you know. I just... I thought, you know, I needed a change in my life. And thank God, you know, Slash and, and Axel and the guys called me up mm. and said, okay, it's time to do it. So, so you knew Slash when he was still Saul? Saul Hudson, what, yes. What, 13 years old? 11. 11 years old. And then, you know, you, you, both you guys went through a whole bunch of different bands. Mm -hmm. And then finally, I mean, the, the formation of Guns N' Roses seemed to take forever because you guys were always kind of circling around each mm -hmm. other. But you never really got to get, you kind of come together, fall apart. Well, together. that's how a lot of bands, you know, you know, come together. We play with different, different players, and you play around. You do, you know, only thing with each one of us individually and as a group is thinking. We just wanted to play with whoever we could, get better, play wherever we could, any show, with any party, anything, just to get better and get closer to achieving our goals, which was to be, you know which was, we wanted success. Mm -hmm. And it's a shame, of course, that when you get the success, you don't realize you have the success, and you take advantage of it. But, okay, so you guys or are- Or not even understand it. But, yeah, okay, so you're part of a scene in, in Hollywood, yeah. and there's a lot of bands that are like, you know, you know, rivals with each other. Yeah. You're living together in a house, you're doing drugs together, you're sharing group, all that kind of stuff is going on. But you're in a bubble. I mean, you don't know that there's an outside world because that's your life, right? That's, that's it. And when you become successful, I mean, I was talking to Dave Mustaine about this, you know, they would come off tour, the bus would drop them off on the corner and they'd have no place to go. I have nowhere to go. That, 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 it's just still this, and well, we have homes to go to now, but it's like when we go home, we're good for, you know, and I know Dave, and I know myself, and I know my, my band. We're home for three, four days, and we're all, where's the bus? Where's the bus? We're not living. It doesn't matter. We want to play. There's nothing, you know, there's just that excitement and that love that you get. That uh, the time uh, in the, I guess it'd be middle 80s with you, so 
Crew's coming up. You got all the glam metal yeah. bands like Rat and, and Poison and whatever starting to come up. You guys were at the end of that sort of yes. ascendance, right? And then, then you guys hit with, with you get the record deal with Geffen and you, yeah. you know, kind of camouflage it with the, uh, with, you know, like you know, the fake indie deal. With the, with oh, the live like a suicide. Well, yeah, like the Uzi suicide yeah. label, and then and then it was really a Geffen deal, and then all of a sudden you guys just like, well, I, I remember back when 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 Appetite came out, I was like, Jesus Christ, where did these guys come from? The streets of Hollywood, <laughs> and it, it happened so. F it seemed to well, happen so fast. Well, you think it happens fast, but you know when well, you're living it. Too. Yeah, on your side, it, it seems like, and now it seems like it because it's over. Hmm. You know, and and with like this book. I wear my heart on my sleeve with this book, and I, 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 I tell it how it is and how, you know, the life was. But I want when I get home off to a run tour with my band Adler's Appetite, and you go to adlersappeteonline.com, and you can hear the single, our new single called "It's Good to Be Alive." But when I get home off this tour, I'm going. I'm going to build a big bonfire. And I'm gonna take this book and I'm gonna throw it in there. Why? Because I want to leave the past behind. That's the past. It's over. I lived it. I experienced it. I need to get rid of the past to move on to the future. Okay. Well, you've, you've so maybe 15 years from now, I'll write a new book, and I'll be a little bit more happy. <laughs> well, the, the the cool thing about the book is 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 there's there's so much Gunner's history there, that a lot of honest, honest honest Gunner's history that a lot of people don't know. No. And you know the first half of the book is, is filled with all kinds of dates and events and you know things that happened to you and things that happened to the band from from an insider's point of view and it's 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 really fascinating. Well, those are exciting things. Those are the kind of things that like when I was growing up listening to Aerosmith, Led Zeppelin, that I wanted to see, you know hear and know about. You only knew about the interviews. And when you're doing, usually most interviews when you're younger, it's a party. You're, mm -hmm. You know, there's drugs, there's goods, you're all excited and happy. So you think everything's a party. But you don't, now, now they have the behind the musics. Mm -hmm. And you see, well, it wasn't such a party. It was, there's a lot of being sick, having to go on stage, throwing up blood, hospitals. Now you're knowing about that stuff. That's what happened. And, and the interesting relationships that the members of the band have with, with each other. I mean, Izzy's off doing his thing. Izzy's a gypsy. You know, you and Slash, you know, always been close, although there were times yeah, where you 20 years for one. Um, Axel is just Axel, I guess. It, that, it's well put, because that's exactly how I put it. So what about Axel? Axel's Axel. And I love Axel, and I want to be a part of his life again. I want him to be a part of my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we've done, we're brothers, and we'll always be brothers. But you know what? Brothers fight. Yeah. You know, you might not always like your brother, but you're going to love your brother. And, and even Axel, he can't, it, him and all his lawyers and whatever, he can't take away what we had. What we still have, since there's five of us, mm -hmm. and we're still alive, we still can do this. But he can't take that away. It's kind he can't of take it from the fans, from us, not even himself.